Hello, this is Frank DeMore from the End Times Research Ministry. Today is August the 21st of 2015. I'd like to invite you to go over to my website that you see here on the front page and take the time and get my book for free today, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. You can do that by clicking on the link below. Just look for the button that says free and you'll see it in red. And I just updated this book as two days ago, August the 19th. So it's very current and free. Now one of the prophecies that I want to talk about first of all is the prophecy in the book of Revelation. And for those of you who may not know, the Revelation is the revealing of what's going to happen in the last days. But more importantly, it's the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in order for the Lord to come back at the end of the tribulation, there are certain things that have to take place. And this is what the Lord has revealed to us in the book of Revelation. Now, one of the things that he told us that were going to happen was found in Revelation chapter 7, verse 16, and Revelation 16, 8. I'll read those. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. And then Revelation 16, 8, the fourth angel poured out his bowl in the sun, and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. Well, all you have to do, number one, I'm not going to show you this, because it's been on the news for the last couple of weeks, the forest fires that are burning out of control in many parts of California. The last count that I saw was 21. I believe there's even more now. And we've also seen... Uh, deaths now due to those massive fires that are spreading because of the drought situation and the intense heat. Now in Revelation, Jesus tells us that the people will never hunger so that we know that during the tribulation and we're moving in that direction, we're not there yet. We're in the birth pangs of fulfilling that revelation that the Lord gave to us. So the birth pangs are definitely increasing, as I'm going to show you. But part of that would be hunger. And of course we know that the intense heat as it kills off the crops, as it takes away the water supply, that the people are not only going to be hungry, but they're going to be, as you see in that scripture, they're going to be thirsty. And the sun, of course, is going to be beating on them with scorching heat. This is what we're told. This is what we see in both chapters 7 and 16 of the Revelation. Now over the years I've been warning you what to look for in the future and I've been telling you that it's going to get hotter and hotter and there's going to be more problems with water. That's what we're seeing. Now in my old prophecy site that was called BibleProphecyMan.com on November the 1st of 2013 I gave you one of these warnings. I'll show you what I said. And I gave you the same scripture that I just read, or part of that scripture, you'll see Revelation 7 and also Revelation 16. And this is what I was saying for the warning. Our earth is on the road to fulfilling the Revelation warnings. Look at the conditions we have been facing with all the weird weather, and please understand one important fact, which is, it is going to get much worse as the last day labor pains get strong. Well, that was my warning in 2013. Was I right? Did I rely on what the Lord Jesus has spoken to me and believed it? Yes, I did. Take a look at this article that came out by Time in January 6th of 2015 reporting on what happened in 2014. You'll see the headline. 2014 was officially the hottest year on record. And it says, and all 10 of the hottest years on record have come after 1998. In other words, the birth pangs have been speeding up. Scientists have declared 2014 officially the hottest year on record. There you have it. Now, as we move into 2015, is the trend continuing? Are those birth pangs that Jesus Christ warned us about, are they coming? You better believe it. Let me show you a news report that just came out today. Now this is from CNN, NOAA, hottest July a month on record, and 2015 could be the hottest year. 
Well, it's now official. July 2015 is the warmest month on record. The biggest driver of this, I think, is El Nino. It's always warm when we have an El Nino year. It's that warm water that sits off the, the Pacific coast of South America, getting blown across the Pacific. It's a warm pool of air, and it keeps the atmosphere warmer because it is so warm. We also have greenhouse gases, the highest concentrations that we've ever measured. So where do these measurements come from? Thermometers on land. The satellite measurements, looking down at the Earth, measuring temperatures remotely and also ships at sea taking measurements as they cross the globe. Now there are other smaller circulations across the globe too. There are patterns across the Pacific Northwest. This thing called the blob out there. An area of warm water that has really drastically changed the climate for Seattle and Portland and for most of California in a very big drought. All of this part of the warmest month on record. Now, as I said, there are many prophecies that we're supposed to be looking for altogether, not just one or two, but all of them. This is what Jesus showed us in Matthew chapter 24. He said, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Now, one of the things that I showed you yesterday, for example, had to do with disease. And in my book, I list a lot of these diseases, diseases that are resistant to drugs. Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, the Lord shows us this. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and one of the signs would be pestilence, and that, of course, would be diseases. And then he says earthquakes in diverse places. So yesterday I showed you an article, for example, at my site, and this news came out August the 19th. Antibiotic resistant superbug found at California Hospital. And the article says this, it came out of Pasadena, California. A Los Angeles area hospital said Wednesday that some of its patients contracted an antibiotic resistant superbug that has been linked to a type of medical scope and infected dozens of people around the country. When you read further, you'll see that it has to do with these duodenoscopes that they're using, but again, here it is, superbugs. Now, when you go over and you read my book, you're going to see list after list of reports about new superbugs that are antibiotic resistant. Now that was on the 19th. Let me show you the news for today, for example. Now this news came out from Yahoo, you see 23 hours ago, Saudi Mars infections soar ahead of the hedge pilgrimage. It says Mars coronavirus infections have soared in Saudi Arabia ahead of the hedge pilgrimage, killing three people in Fortune Riyadh Hospital to close its emergency ward officials in a newspaper said Thursday. So this is just one of many, many cases that we're seeing reported around the world in these different superbugs that are, again, antibiotic resistant. And when you go to the website, you'll see that they have pictures here in Saudi Arabia with people having to wear masks and protecting themselves. I'm going to play a short video for you that gives you some information about the Mars, how it is affected and transmitted, and where it came from. Middle East Respiratory Syndrome is a viral respiratory illness caused by a new coronavirus. It was first identified in Saudi Arabia in 2012. Coronaviruses are a vast family of viruses responsible for a huge range of illnesses, from the common cold to SARS, this severe acute respiratory syndrome, which caused around 800 deaths in 2003, mainly in China. MERS has so far proved fatal in 36% of all known cases. Typical symptoms include fever, coughing and breathing problems. Stomach problems and or pneumonia are also fairly common. The virus seems to trigger more serious illnesses in the elderly, those with weakened immune systems and people with chronic illnesses like cancer or diabetes. Its exact origins aren't known, but MERS is believed to have come from bats, which likely passed it on to camels, which then transmitted the virus to humans. 
However, the virus doesn't seem to be easily transmitted from one person to another, except where there's close contact, for example, caregivers looking after an infected person. Currently, there's no vaccine or specific treatment for the virus. Now, I'm going to take the time here to talk about the Shemitah, because there's a lot of chatter going around on the Internet about things that may happen in September. And a lot of people don't even know what the Shemitah is. So let me just bring you to this website and read it for you so that you have an understanding what it is if you hear somebody talking about the Shemitah, which could be of a large significance or it may just fizzle out when we see September. But there are a lot of things that have happened in the past during the month of September that fulfilled prophecy. So... This is one of the reasons why Christians around the world are paying attention to this year, the Shemitah year. And the article says, what is a Shemitah? The sabbatical year basis, absolution of loans, desisting from all field work, and the spiritual objective of all the above. As soon as the Jews settled in the Holy Land, they began to count and observe seven-year cycles. Every cycle would cultivate in a sabbatical year known as the Smita, literally, to release. The year following the destruction of the second holy temple was the first year of a seven-year sabbatical cycle. In the Jewish calendar, counting from creation, this was the year 3829-68-69 CE and the secular calendar. And by counting sevens from then, we see that the next Smita year will be the year 5,775 after creation, which runs from September the 15th, 2014 through September 13th, 2015, obviously, this year. So as I said, there's concern about this September and the Shemitah year, and I want to discuss this a little bit and give you some news and connect the dots. So let me give you a little bit of information what happened previously. September the 13th, the last day of the Smita year, during the last two Smita cycles were witnessed record-breaking stock market crashes on the very day of the Smita year. And that's the Elu 29th on the biblical calendar. For example, if you go back to September 17th of 2001, which was the Elu 29 on the biblical calendar, we witnessed the greatest one-day stock market crash in all of U.S. history up until that time. The Dow plunged 684 points, and it was a record that held for exactly seven years. Keep in mind the cycle that they talked about to speed the cycle. So moving on, until the end of the next Smita cycle, on September the 29th, 2008, which was also Elu 29 and the biblical calendar, the Dow plummeted 777 points, which still today remains the greatest one-day stock market crash of all time in the United States. Now we are in another Smita year. That cycle, again, that we were talking about, it began in the fall of 2014, and it ends on September the 13th of 2015. Now, in some of my previous posts, I gave you some information about the things that were supposed to be taking place during this September. But right now, there's a lot of activity going on, a lot of chatter, as I said, about the stock market and the jitters in the stock market. And is this world getting ready to be hit again in the Smithy year from a massive stock exchange crash. Now we do know in the scriptures in Revelation chapter 13 that the man of sin, this Antichrist, will come and he is going to be the head of a one world government. Now we know that that's never going to happen unless one person has control of all the world's finances. So somewhere down the line we know that there is going to have to be a collapse that will generate enough of a crisis that will force people to call for someone to take care of the problem. And there you go, stepping on the center stage would be the Antichrist. And he would have the reins, if you will, of a new global economy. Now the question one should ask, are we being set up now 
for another crash that will be worse than the one that drove the stock market down 777 points? Is it possible that this September will be such a crash that it will bring out the Antichrist? Well, look at the CNBC News that came out just about two minutes ago. It says, S&P dips below 2K, Dow plunges triple digits as growth concerns weigh. This isn't the only article today. Take a look at this. This one came from the time. U.S. stock market hurt by China and Greece worries. U.S. stocks continue to endure pressure from devaluation of Chinese currency, uncertainty over Greece's bailout. U.S. stocks are sharply lower in early trading on concerns about the Chinese economy. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 153 points or 0.9% to 16,835 as of 9.35 a.m. Eastern Time Friday. The Standard and Poor 500 Index dropped 19 points, also 0.9% to 2015 the nasdaq skipped 69 points or 1.4 percent to 4808 following last week's decision by the governments to reduce the value of chinese currency stock markets have taken a hit so little by little we're seeing signs that it may happen again a major crash or a major turn could happen in september and this meet the year I'm sure you're going to see a good picture of this from the Wall Street Journal. There's a graph there that shows you what's been going on with the global stocks as they fall further because of these Chinese worries. Take a look at the Dow. You can see the, the blue just falling like crazy right here. And I can't tell you for sure if September is going to be the crash or not, but it's for certain I'm going to be watching it just in case. But this article says a global market route intensified Friday, plummeting stocks and commodities as fresh evidence that Chinese economy is slowing spooked investors. Now, keep in mind, China has a huge, huge economy. And when that slows down, it's going to affect a large part of the world. So it is well worth keeping your eyes on. Now let me show you some of the things that are going to happen in September. September the 13th, we know that there's going to be a partial solar eclipse. And the Lord told us there would be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. I'll get into a little bit about this as we go on here. September the 14th, Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of the Trumpets, is known to the Christians. Also, September the 14th, the first day of trading on Wall Street after the end of the Smita year. So, again, a lot of chatter on the Internet thinking that that will be the date where the crash comes. I don't know. I'm just giving you what is written by some of the people over the net. September the 15th, the 70th session of the UN General Assembly begins on that date. It has been widely reported that Francis, and we're talking about Pope Francis, plans to introduce a resolution which will give formal UN Security Council recognition to the Palestinian state shortly after the new session begins. And up until now, the U.S. has always been the one blocking such a resolution. But Barack Obama has already indicated that things may be different this time around. It would be extremely difficult to overstate the significance of this. And, of course, one of the prophecies that I use at my website is Zechariah chapter 12 or 4, where we see all of the nations will be coming against Israel in the last days, and that includes the United States of America. And this is one of the reasons, personally, I believe that the Lord has placed Barack Obama in position to break off ties like we used to have with the nation of Israel. Now, moving on, September the 15th. Most of you know Jade Helm. Military exercise are scheduled to end. And there's been a lot of chatter on the net about this, thinking that the J. Helm military exercises have been put in place because they know that there's something major is going to happen and they're preparing the military for it, possibly martial law or whatever. September the 17th, 
If there's going to be a rate hike in September, this is probably when the Federal Reserve will do it. They've been talking about it. You just saw it in the news today. If you watch the news tonight, the national news in America, you'll see them talking about it again. September the 17th, this is the deadline for Congress to vote on Obama's deal with Iran. And of course, this goes again to Zechariah 12.4, where Obama is making friends with Iran and not Israel. He is giving Iran everything that they want to possess in the future, a nuclear bomb that Iran has stated that they're going to be using against the nation of Israel. And of course, anyone who has read Ezekiel chapter 38 knows that God specifically mentions Iran in an attack along with some other Islamic nations to attack the nation of Israel. Then on September the 25th, on May 14th, get this, May 14th, 2014, this French foreign minister, Laurent Fabius, famously proclaimed that we only had 500 days to avoid a climate chaos. And this time frame of the 500 day ends on September the 25th. So we see a lot of things taking, supposed to happen in the month of September. And then... I'm going to end it with this one, September the 28th. This is the date for the last four blood moons that fall on the biblical festival during the 2014 and 15. So this blood moon will be a super moon, by the way, and will be clearly visible from the city of Jerusalem. And of course, we know, as I said earlier in this video, that the Lord told us we should be watching for the sun, the signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. So a lot will be happening, and I'm not even giving you all the events that are supposed to take place in September. But one thing I do know, we should be watching the events anyway, because this was the command by our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So a lot to think about. What you should do is to keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in concluding this video today in this update, I just want to go back to the birds, the fish, and the animals dying. You see one of the prophecies in Hosea chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. And when you read that prophecy, you'll see that our Lord told us that the birds, the fish, and the animals would be dying off. They're going to be dying off in mass numbers. And if you haven't read the book of Revelation, you really should, because you're going to learn there, for example, that every creature in the seas and the oceans are going to die off. And we're seeing birth pangs of that right now. So almost on a daily basis now, I've been giving you every report. And when I don't report or don't make a video about it, what I do is I'll add it to my book, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth, so that you can go there, click the link, and you'll be able to see it for yourself and read the entire article. But I'm going to show you now some of the new reports that came in that I haven't shown you. Now this report is from Sweden. You'll see the mass mortality of herons there in Sweden. Here's the picture of it. Just thousands of these fish that have died. Mass numbers. Now this next report comes from China. So here's on the 20th Tianjinhai River, dead fish was not detected cyanide. They thought maybe that somebody put cyanide in there, but they didn't. And we have thousands of fish dead again in China. Report, hundreds of reports around the world. We're seeing the same exact type of thing. The fish that are scattered all over the water and all over the shore, stinking up everything. And then, of course, many of these reports are a mystery. The Officials don't know what is killing off the fish. But if you know what the word of the Lord says, we know that this is only the beginning of things to take place. Now here in the United States on the 20th, you'll see here that hundreds of purple martins found dead in downtown Tulsa. It says, when Kelly Baker arrived for work at the Sun Building downtown Wednesday morning, she saw something she'd never seen before, hundreds of dead and dying birds. 
We saw dozens and dozens of dead birds on the ground and in the parking lots, in the streets, live birds in the streets being run over by cars on Detroit Avenue. It was just an absolute mess, said Baker, property manager of the building. And again, reports like this from many parts around the world. And again, just don't understand why these birds are just falling out of the sky. I'm going to turn my attention to Bolivia where we saw a report there that there was 3,500 animals that died because of the severe weather there. And this isn't the only report that you're going to be seeing like this. We're going to be seeing a lot more. I keep saying it every single time I post it. I warn you, please watch the news almost now on a daily basis. You're going to see continuous news about either the birds dying off in mass numbers, the fish dying off in mass numbers, or the animals dying off in mass numbers. And if you want all of that information, all the way back from 2008, I categorized it in my book, every single link, you'll have more than enough documentation that is overwhelming proof. When the Lord told us in the book of Hosea that the birds, the fish, and the animals were going to be dying off in these massive numbers, and we're seeing it, you better believe that God is who he says he is, and he is going to return. This is Frank DeMore from the End Times Research Ministry.